So now we come to a section where you get to ask me anything. Hmm. And, uh, let's see, you know, it's called stump me if you can and uh, ask me anything you want. Okay, okay. Well, because today is International Women's Day, I wanted to ask you, Lakshmi, um, if you were a man, do you mm-hmm. think you would still be a feminist or would you be sexist? Ah, oh, wow. Um, you know, all the, I can only go by the men I knew. Uh, I think I would have been like them. Um, I would have been like my father, I think, uh, whether I was a boy or a girl. And uh, he was, uh, like you were saying about your dad, uh, he had no label, but by nature... He was such a force of nature. He had three daughters and especially in India, mm-hmm. you know, where, uh, you know, son is supposed to be uh, the, uh, the more desired one. People would tell him, oh, Dr. Saab, I'm so sorry. You have only <laughs> three daughters. And my dad would say, what do you mean? I have three daughters who are going to take care of me. You know, so <laughs> have, they, he would call us his three princesses and stuff and told us that never, ever, uh, should you depend on another person for your livelihood? He, you, he said, you cannot get married till you finish your master's. So I think even if I was a man or a woman, I think I would have been like him. And uh, um, and and I have a son. So I really like uh, Gloria Steinem's quote that says that it's not just about raising your daughters like your sons, but raising your sons like your daughters. So I think that equality should be practiced you know, without without it having to be a label, it should be natural. And that's how I would have been, I think, uh, even if I were a man. Fantastic. Fantastic. Now, I want to ask you if you were a character from the past, fictional or real, who would you be? Mm-hmm. Oh, my favorite person in this whole world is Marie Curie. And uh, I would have been, I, I mean... In some ways, I feel you had a very, very tough life. Would I, would I choose such a tough life uh, or not? But boy, wouldn't it be amazing to have a Nobel Prize for you as well? You know, I, she's she's one of my most most favorite people. And that's a very interesting answer in the sense that you remember last time we talked, I said you know yeah. Indian people have two brains, and Marie yeah. Curie she had two brains too. She was Polish and French. Yes, yeah. So yeah. I, I think it's a very befitting answer for you. What would you like to ask me? Um, so, um, you know, you've been doing conversations like this for quite some time. Mm-hmm. How much of an impact do you think they really make? And I mean, if you have any stories where you know of any impact that has been made for by conversations like this. Yeah. You know, it's... Uh, I have to think for a minute. It's a very important question because a lot of times we attend a lot of things and we listen and then we go away. And so what? You know, because I always ask so what question for whatever I'm doing. There are two things I've observed. Uh, You know, sometimes you don't even know the impact you made immediately. And it just comes back in a very weird way later on. Um, So I'll tell you, recently I was talking to somebody, a very, very successful entrepreneur, uh, and I was interviewing him. And uh, like this, we were chatting. And then I said uh, something about, tell me what impact has you have received. He said to me, he said, you know, many years ago when I was a very young person, uh, like four or five years ago when he was a, um, uh, you know, young professional, he said, I listened to your talk. And you said in that, that the one thing that will make or break your future is who you choose to spend the rest of your life with. So don't be guided by emotions, but really think about who you want to marry in a business conference. And he said, I've never heard anybody talk about something so personal in a business conference. He said, to be honest, in my life, that advice has stayed with me. And I took that very, very seriously. And I feel that was one of the best uh, advices I got for my per- for my business life. So sometimes the impact you make, you don't know immediately. And secondly, sometimes, like we worked with Dr. Jitendra Sharma, like this, I was interviewing him. 
he runs uh, something called AMTZ, where they are doing amazing medical technology zone they're building in Andhra Pradesh, etc. And we had this interview, and at the end, he called me and said, that was so interesting for me to do this interview. Can you do things like this for us every month? You know, oh, wow. can we talk about science in an interesting way? So we actually formed a partnership where every month we run something called Tech RX, which is oh. medicine and technology coming together. And we feature the most interesting people who are doing work at the intersection of science and technology. So it's something very specific that has come out of a conversation. So sometimes you don't even know the impact you made. But I always say as a listener, this is my submission to everybody who's listening is that when you spend even one minute of your time on something, make the most out of it. So when you spend your time listening to this interview, think of one thing that will change your life, you know, something that someone said that, that you will remember or even better act on it. So that's my, uh, okay. you know, summary of sometimes you don't know the impact, Sometimes you do, and both ways, it's surprising and amazing. Okay, so my first question, Lakshmi, what is the thing you did in your life that makes you most proud? You know, actually, if I think of your conversation here, um, it's, it probably I would have given a different different answer before having this conversation, but... What I realized through this conversation is that the proudest moment in my life are situations where nobody might even remember me uh, later on because the impact can be that much more. So when I think of my time at Intel, where everything we are using today, uh, you know, the e-commerce, the fact that we are buying online, all these things, there was work that was done in the 90s that brought very, very different people together and uh, got them to work together. So we have common standards and things like that, which is the very unglamorous part, which you were talking about. And now to me, every time I take a phone and I make a purchase or whatever, I feel, I remember the time when we made sure this security protocol worked or something right, like that. Right. And, uh, and Andy Grove was somebody I really, really admired. So the proudest moment for me was, I asked him once like, Andy, will you have dinner with me? because we used to meet even after he retired, I left Intel very, very rarely. Mm -hmm. And he looked at me and he said, you're not dinner worthy, you're coffee worthy. You know, like <laughs> I can't give you one hour, I can give you like 15 <laughs> minutes type. You know, it hurt initially, but then I thought, oh my God, to be coffee worthy to Andy is yeah. like amazing, you know? <laughs> so I guess the proudest moment for me was to be just coffee worthy, you know? Oh yes, how wonderfully <laughs> put, how, how wonderfully put. This is stress is the word, on the word worthy. You worthy, know? yeah, exactly. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. matter whether it's dinner or lunch or coffee. Yes, worthy, you know, like. yeah, absolutely. I have one other question to ask you, Lakshmi. Um, so we've talked a lot about inclusive leadership and you've been in Silicon Valley and you've been in India. You know, what does that, you know, inclusion, I, I don't mean to like take a, a, just a broad-based cultural thing because it can be very individual, but what are the differences? What do you see the differences between the two cultures? Um, I'm Actually, I think I'll put this in what you talked about, which is leading in and leading out, you know. Um, and this is a personal experience. This doesn't mean that's what the culture is. Um, I came to America when I was very young, uh, in a very formative age, when I was just beginning my career. So America actually taught me about leading in, uh, you know, to have very open conversations about what is my purpose, what is my, what are my strengths, what are my weaknesses. I wasn't judged because uh, I, I wasn't good at something. It was okay if you didn't know it, learn something else, you know. To really form my own inner personality of what does leadership mean for me, especially working with people like Andy Grove and Gordon Moore and, you know, people like that really taught me that leading in, you know, what, what are your core values? 
And India, for me, from the time I was a kid, it was always about leading out. Uh, you know, India is a country where, uh, and we have experienced this when we all went, it's like there are no boundaries. People are with you. They invite you home. They hug you. They just start, all, they ask you all kinds of personal questions like, you know, what is your salary? How many kids do you have? And, you know, why are they not married? Why are you not married? I mean, like all sorts of things, you know, it's, but it's such an exuberant culture. And it's in India, I really learned that leading out. And I think you has taught me where the boundaries are for that leading out. Whereas, uh, you know, in India, I learned how to stop sometimes and take my private space also and not just be always out there. So I think each culture has taught me very, very different things. I mean, my ability to embrace any, uh, any person, any culture, any idea definitely comes from India. And my ability to stop and question myself and be okay with my shortcomings or be okay with being, you know, vociferous, et cetera, comes from my time in America. So I think uh, those are the two things 